So Beth is going to present her assessment num uh, task number one. Um, and I'm just going to share the screen with you guys. So can you see it? Yes, I can see it now. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay. Um, for assessment number one, we had to choose two periods um, to present to a client um, who has an inner city apartment. I chose, well, one period was to be um, pre-1900 and one post-1900s to 2000. I chose pre-1900 to do neoclassical, which represents the period between 1750 and 1837. Um, so it's heavily influenced by Greek and Roman um, influences, but it was a departure away from the previous era of a lot of fussy, um, very ornate, um, busy kind of decorating style. And it was more clean lines, angular uh, lines, and very rich yet classic, you know, um, pieces that were going to um, reflect a very ordered way of living and yet opulent. So I was very attracted to the, the gold um, shelving, the mirror and side tables and the chandeliers. It's very linked with that time but is very much an on-trend look. And I chose... Um, very rich purple velvet um, furniture. Neoclassical is usually muted tones, but I wanted to put a little bit more of a contemporary spin on that. And that's the reason I cho chose that very um, vibrant, sort of uh, rich um, purple fabric. And Persian rugs were also um, very much a... Um, uh, he heavily used in that time period. Um, yeah, and I think um, the lighting is really important in that time period too. And the both the chandelier and the side table lamp, um, number 10, are really beautiful pieces that are very contemporary and yet really send that message of um, the essence of neoclassical design. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do you want um, to go through the images? Sure. Um, so one by one? Yes. Okay, number, number one is... It's actually a 1970s piece from Italy. Um, and this is part of my assignment that where I found some of my um, references to be very time consuming and could lead to dead ends because I, I used my sources off the internet I really loved these pieces, but when I went back to the source, I couldn't find who actually designed them. I was only able to find who was selling them. So um, that is something that I have really learned from this assignment is um, to make sure that my source is in place and I have the correct information before I commit to going down a certain road of um, making a design decision. So that was a valuable learning experience. Um, but I love these shelves. They're beautiful, like I said, Italian. 
yes they, they are beautiful yeah um i think i think they um probably just manufactured i wouldn't say that there is a specific designer to that there could be a specific um uh house or manufacturer who produces them right they might relate to some uh styles um, yeah i would say that it it's quite close to something that was produced in 1920s uh, yeah. by Bauhaus, but it's quite, uh, it's changed. So what they changed, basically, they used the gold as metal. Uh, yeah. So obviously it's, it's uh, painted in gold or whatever. Um, and uh, in Bauhaus, you would probably see something similar, but mm -hmm. made out of, you know, plywood or any other material. Yes. Um, and this was a 1970s one, but um, when I was doing the research, there are ones that are coming out now as just contemporary ones that are almost identical, not completely, but that sort of um, trend is revitalising again. So, yeah, yes. that was interesting. Yes. Go on. Okay, the second one is uh, number two is called the Tribeca Velvet Armchair and that's from Joss and Main. And I just really loved this simple lines of this and where they've placed the bolster cushions at the side, I thought was really just a little bit of a departure from using, um, you know, just a, a bolster anywhere. And it tied in with the rest of the round shapes that I had chosen. Number four, the cushion, which is a floor cushion. Um, number 12, the round mirror. And even the round bulbs on the um, Jonathan Alder um, chandelier. Yeah. So that I found really a lovely contrast between the very angular and the round, which softened it a little bit, made it a little bit more modern, I thought. Um, Number three is the Poise Area Rug from the Eternity Collection from our Home Decorators Collection. And I loved the way that this rug incorporated the purple, the gold and the green from um, John William Godwood's painting um, of, I think it's called... Is it the Ian? I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, I thought that was a beautiful marriage of all of those sort of predominant colours. Mm -hmm. I and think that, that's kind of a style of a Persian rug to me. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering whether it's really um, into the neoclassical uh, style. But anyway, go on. I had read in one of the one of my research um, articles, which is not from a professional source, like it, it is from just um, an internet source. Just let me find it in my design notes. Um, Are you looking at your speech? I can just open up here. Can you see it? Yes, I'm looking at that one. Um, do yeah, I mention yeah. the rug? Persian rugs feature heavily. Furniture is simple and geometric and the use of Persian rugs features heavily here. You can see it here. Yeah, and maybe um, because I think that is a Persian style of rug. Would that be correct? That's that right. It is, it is a Persian style rug. The the problem with neoclassical that's um, the roots of neoclassical period. Where are they from? Beth, did you identify? The Greek and Roman. Exactly. Um, so very Greek. clean, straight. You know, geometric, nearly yeah. like a golden proportion. You know, everything is very open plan. You know, sophisticated nothing, um, you know, unnecessary, not exactly. overly decorated, you know, every piece got their own purpose, etc. So would that quote then just be like an unreliable piece of information? 
Uh, it's hard to say because it depends who the author is, but what you collected here really reflects it like um, that girl standing there in that Greek outfit. It's just absolutely perfect fit. Uh, yeah. That um, vase is number eight is perfect fit. The yeah. mirror, you know, I doubt about the lamp. Uh, yes, yeah. the chandelier because it looks more like a um, very modern piece, but I really like the number 10. I think it belongs to that particular style. Yeah, the yeah. Chair, the chair is perfect, the cushion is perfect. I have a bit of a problem with the coffee table because it seems it's a very clean lines and then very streamlined and it seems like it's belonged to the 70s. But okay, yeah. Yeah, it, it's just the, the, the feel of the furniture, you know, it portrays. But yeah. this vase in particular is a very good spot on. Um, yeah. The chair is spot on. The number 10 is spot on. So yeah. this is real Roman style. Number 12 is spot on. Real good color in gold. So yeah. And purple goes together perfectly. Yeah. I yeah. really like it. And white, clean white is, is real good. Marble, again, what, what the girl's standing against to. Yeah. I would probably bring more colors of the, you know, old gold in it, like what yeah. the girl's wearing. She's like wearing a green kind of a, you know, opulent color, very rich yes. color, because green and purple and gold produces a very good combination. Yeah. 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 Great. And those curtains are beautiful too. Yeah, I thought they were such unusual rectangular um, hardware. I had not seen that before, especially with the Perspex. And they're just a bit of a modern twist on that neoclassical, you know, element. They are. They're, it's a real good find. I really like them. The lamp is beautiful. But again, if the lamp had some, you know, uh, Greek reminiscence to it, you know, like a meander pattern you know what i mean the the square pattern yes that's why you went for that particular shell because it reminds you of this greek ornament that traditional meander yeah do you know what i'm talking about the spiral square sorry i didn't hear you then the square Yes, the part in which Greeks use on the all of the designs. Yes. So, and that's why this, the, you chosen that shelf uh, unit because it's really reminiscent of that look. Yes. Whereas you're saying number five and thirteen are um, too reminiscent of the seventies, even though there's that squareness there it's sort of linked more to a different period. It does because of the lightness of it. Yes, yes, I see that. And the metals used, it kind of, um, it does not, you know, reflect the um, neoclassical period. Yeah. The pieces were more heavy. I would say if you chosen like a marble top table with gold, that would yeah. suit better. Yeah. Um, yeah. The base is uh, marble and um, and design is very clean. Yes. Yeah, I can see that now looking at that. They do look quite lightweight in comparison. Um, the reason I chose the chandelier was um, because it it um, it had those straight lines and I wanted to modernise um make it for this time period um and the weight of it is very in line with the shelves but do you think that that is is not a, a good thing it's too modern I, I i would say the only one thing which relates to that particular mood board is the finishes which is gold and white yeah, uh, golden glass, and um, I, I wouldn't chosen it simply because it's it's quite seventies. If you imagine this piece, um, it's more it's more like a retro style. Yes, yeah, 
You, okay. Yeah, if you imagine this piece being done not in gold, but done in, say, you know, stainless steel and, the, and change the bulbs into, you know, some colored bulbs. Yes. That would particularly fit perfectly into, you know, 50-style apartment, you know, some, um, yes. uh, what do we call it, um, um, pop art. Yes, yes. What would be neoclassical is the rosettes, you know. Oh, okay. So the round shape um, chandelier with some, you know, ornaments or just simplicity of it with maybe with the gold, um, you know, trim around it and just a lower it down. Very simple, um, yes. you know, muted, like maybe like, you know, frosted glass or something. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Something oh, that uh, looks yeah. similar to the mirror, but like a chandelier, you know, and chandelier type. Yeah, that's really helpful because I can see how, um, I can see what you're saying because it sort of is, um, I'm, I am mixing different eras, although there's a theme there. I can really see that now that you've pointed that out. So thank you. That's really helpful. That's fine. And also when you see here, the girl, she's, um, she wears this um, draped outfit. And I'm really happy that you chosen curtains because the curtains have reflect that, you know, uh, beautiful amount of fabric, heavy fabric, you know, uh, and just a simple fabric without any print. And it's all about the, you know, the quality of it, the, the drapery of it, etc. how it flows. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to do the second board now? I will. Um, for the second board, I chose um, something outside the parameters of what we were asked to do in the brief. And I, I chose New Urban, which represents 2010. That was a mistake on my part. Um, and thank you for your input with that. Um, with the New Urban um, style, um, this was much more about uh, more of a um, a softened industrial kind of feel um, with natural materials, um, almost commercial type um, materials like the concrete countertop in the kitchen picture and the use of the large drawer fronts, um, which are more like slabs of wood than they are a conventional sized drawer. That's in picture number six. Um, in picture number 10, that contrast between the clean, white, uh, unfussy walls and the um, suspended um, wooden stairs in between. Um, I just get my design notes. So it's slightly more minimal in style, and it, what I concentrated on in my thinking was bringing the outdoors in. I had an excellent picture of a um, a um, plant wall for inside the apartment but I couldn't actually track down the source of the um, picture so I decided not to use it but I've I've uh, in in using picture number nine tried to make that a, a bit of a focal board point on the board that um, greenery was very important in a new urban home um, also um, number seven, the picture of the bike, which is um, a shelving system de designed by Knife and Saw. Uh, it's a bike shelf. And I just think this really speaks volumes about living in the city and cutting... Um, uh, using a, a soft carbon footprint and alternative modes of transport. 
Um, one thing with the new urban um, design that I found really interesting was just having that sense of a really nurturing environment within the apartment in contrast to the um, bustle and harshness maybe of, of the city and using soft colours um, and not a, a lot of colour but making it a really calm, muted space. I really love picture number three. It's a, um, it is a clay bead chandelier from a uh, company called Clay Life, which is South African, and it is a company that employs or started off employing um, disadvantaged women um, who had no other source of income. I think they may have been, um, um, their health was, was compromised. And they came up with this idea of making bespoke um, handmade crafted chandeliers and I think they're beautiful. It's grown since then but it still has that essence of at its core um, helping um, disadvantaged women by employing them in, in that sort of craft. I love that marriage between that ethical kind of business um, as well as a, a beautiful product and I think that really captures a lot of the new urban um, feel as well. Picture number one is uh, another clay tile and this company um, recycles a lot of materials so that there's that um, theme of um, environmentally conscious, uh, sustainable design. They have beautiful products um, and, and it harkens back to that kind of um, natural kind of motives and, and that kind of thing with, a, with an international kind of um, influence in them, um, Moroccan and um, and different pieces which make it geometrical and interesting. Um, number eight is a picture of um, the inspiration colour um, paint at Borwick Colour, which is a clay-based um, wall paint. Um, and I was just highlighting there the use of uh, natural products and um, that really sums up that that board I think okay um, I really like this board I think you've done uh, better on the selection of the um, elements and mm -hmm. um, the materials as well and that you highlighted all this uh, sustainability and uh, you know clean living that's what people are trying to pursue now. I really like this uh, fabrics which you chosen for the couch, the uh, more like a natural organic, you know, hemp linen yeah. fabrics, uh, which like, you know, if, uh, what did we say, like, you know, urban friendly, which you can wash, you can lounge, you can relax on that couch. I really like that the, you added the plants as well. And yep. it is a, a common trend. It's very um, on trend now to actually have living plants inside of your house, as many as you can. If you can have it in the kitchen, you have it in the kitchen, whether you're growing herbs or tomatoes or whatever. So growing garden in, inside of the apartment or inside of your house is quite popular at the moment. Yes. Um, I really like that you selected the clay and the, the clay was actually designed by um, disadvantaged people and the, and the tiles look handmade and I really like that they selected the concrete bench. Um, that, that is on the trend at the moment. So it mm -hmm. does reflect industrial feel. At the same time, it gives that rustic kind of a country effect to it as well because of this non-treated wood and um, non-treated tiles and, and raw um, concrete as well. 
So mm. that gives a real good uh, feel to it. Um, then the bike shelf is amazing. I haven't seen that before. I think yes. it's cool. It's really I love it. Yeah, one, one question on the, I mean, the designer styled it with the, some, you know, ports and etc. I mean, technically, you will probably knock it off. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but good idea, nevertheless. I really like the, sh- the way they stylize the shelves, the bookshelves and um, what you put yeah. in there. And they put like a vinyl records. They, so they bring in some retro feel in it as well. Yes. Wow so it's kind of a gives that relaxing feel after a very busy you know um, work um, day and the colors are beautiful too gray black green they nicely selected so very relaxing you know at the same time you know homely feel and um, and the same time quite modern yeah so, yeah I really like this board I um I think you nailed it. The only one thing I would probably, probably mm-hmm. reflect a little bit more raw colors, like, you know, ochre and maybe, um, you know, the um, earthy. earthy type mm-hmm. of colors in there. It seems a little bit too clinical for me, like to sure. you know, yeah. white and black and, you know, and all the relaxed I have is the, is the plants, but they're cactuses. <laughs> yes yeah yeah but, i i see that yeah yeah so maybe like you know the the veggie you know or whatever a herb um um window seal stylized in that way and um, maybe more like a raw linen feel maybe like hemp rug and stuff like that yeah yeah oh yeah i haven't got a rug in there um uh, the other thing was the window treatments too and um not uh, not having any window treatments which was in contrast to the neoclassical was to keep that light coming in and that connection to outdoors as well and that was another feature of that sort of style yeah, and um, it's well noted because, yeah, we're trying to bring as much more light as we can into in the city apartments. And, yes, the, the window treatment only goes into the bathrooms and um, the bedrooms because then you basically need to have it. But yeah, living rooms don't have much of a window treatment at all, and that's a well noted. Mm. Yes. So... Um, um, that that really um, wraps up my presentation in terms of fonts that I've used. Um, and this is probably an area, this was my thinking um, with the fonts that I used, is that I'm trying to keep all of my um, presentation very consistent throughout. So I haven't... I didn't delineate between the two boards in terms of fonts, um, but I was trying to um, keep it consistent with all my other work and marry the two together. Um, is is that a bit lacking in this assignment as well? Um, yes. Well, the, the thing is in the layout as well, what we want to see is the actual difference between the two styles. Okay, yeah. So the more differentiation we, we have, uh, the better uh, you can present it to the client. Because for the client, they, they do not understand your thinking behind it. They don't know the styles. I mean, most of the time they don't. And, yeah. you know, you will be the only one judge uh, on what to select and how to put it together. Yeah. Yeah. So, and when you present it to the client, you know, it's always a good idea to give two options to your client. So you basically give them two options. So you have your urban and then the, you have your second one near yeah. classical. So to differentiate them as much as you can, you should make them quite, you know, uh, distinct. Obviously different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I might just show you the previous um submission so you can see what I'm talking about and how the students actually differentiated their um, assessments just sure. the mood boards and that was the whole point of doing those two different periods because 
uh, you can actually, you know, trace the difference very easily without even, you know, looking for some um, different looks. I think, I think it was, uh, Casey's done a pretty good job on it, I think. This one. So I just saw it into Victoria. Okay. So, Casey, just for the quick comparison. She's done the Victorian. I'm just going to share it quickly with you. Okay, can you see now? Yes. Yes. So, so this is a Victorian mood board, and she's done it by hand. So she cut it out, pasted it. There are lots of, you know, problems with this board, but we're not going to go into that. Sure. But, but I see how that um, font is very reflective of that period. That's right. And also, if you look at the elements of this board, you can see uh, compared to the second one, look at this, mid-century. Oh, yes, absolutely. They're poles apart. Yeah. And yeah. that's just easier to, you know, to work with it and easier to differentiate it as well. So I'm yes. just going to show you a little bit more. Emily, I think it's done a fantastic job. Okay, so I'm just going to share it again. So that was interesting. My students from the same group selected the same periods <laughs> to reflect on. This is a, another Victorian inspired inner city penthouse. Mm -hmm. And what, what's good about this mood board and uh, what I highlighted uh, previously is that she actually placed the swatches of wood mm -hmm. there. Yes. Even if they're from internet, it still gives us an idea of, you know, what kind of finishes we're going to apply. And yeah. Also, yeah, on the wall, you can see have the wall treatments, etc. I also really like what she's done here. She actually put lots of um, tableware, you know, yeah. um, obviously chandeliers, etc., things like that. So it kind of gives you an idea of how you're going to decorate it. And yeah. the good a thing to do as well is not to show too many pictures of already finished interior designs because clients sometimes can hook on that. Yes. And that would be a problem. So what she's done here, I really like, she actually selected the period, um, that period interior design. If you have a look at the, I think it's number 12. And uh, then interpretation of that uh, period later on on the number seven. You can see that. Yes. So this is the differences. So I'm just going to show you the other one she created. We're nearly going to be finished. Can you see that one? The inner uh, 1950s? No, probably not. I'm just going to share it. Not yet, no. Okay. Now you should be able to see it. Can you see it? Not yet. Oh, now I can. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. With the fashion and and everything in there as well. Because it's a good idea to put some inspiration in it as well. Yes. Okay. So, well done. Do you have any more questions about the next assessment? Um, no, I don't have any questions as yet. I've done such a huge amount from doing this assignment and the activities um i really appreciate the um lesson i've learned on on reliability of sources and i've got quite a bit of information out of my local library books and um, um downloaded articles and more professional stuff off Martin resources uh, that is making my time so much more effective because I'm I spent hours chasing down sources that um, from you know tracing things back from Pinterest so um, I'm I'm definitely approaching things differently and I'm thinking differently so 
I don't have any questions as such, but just to report back that I'm I'm really learning. <laughs> That's very good to hear, Beth. That's very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, and any questions you know, you can to me. So we have Vesna yeah. here joining us. Vesna, do you have any questions? No, I'm so sorry. I'm so late for this meeting. I thought it was cancelled. No, no, I cancelled the series of meetings. This is, will be the uh, link you need to go every Thursday. So I made it easier for you so it doesn't change really. I'm sorry. I thought it was cancelled and I was on the phone for like two hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought, you know what, I'll just check in because last week I did the same thing and you were there and nobody else was. So <laughs> I'm sorry, Beth. Um, I missed most of your presentation, but I'm That's here. Okay, Beth. <laughs> Good to hear your voice. Thank you. Okay, so no questions, Vesna, because we just need it finished. Yeah, we yeah we are. Um, the only question I had was, if I did a corner bench off the side wall. So it's a breakfast bench. Yes. Is it going to be in the elevation? It's connected to the wall. Yes, it must be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the cupboards behind are not going to be shown then. So do I do. So if it's a corner bench and yeah. it's sitting in, in the corner, so it should be reflected on the elevation number two and three. Because you can't look, fine. You, I, I'm not sure whether you I'm want to have it. Eight, I'm going to have eight elevations at that stage. All right. So I, I really need to see that. Yeah. Just maybe sketch it up or, or, and send me to have a look at it because I can't imagine. Because on the elevation number one, we only have a very narrow space before the window. No, no, no. It's, um, I know. I get a lot of that. Um, it, it, it's, it's a little return with two little um, high chairs on the bench. Oh, so it's an um, L shape. Yes, it is. It, and they're in completely um, uh, open on the open side where you can see the lounge. So oh, I can't look at the... Yes. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Uh, so if it's an L-shaped kitchen and there is a cabinet behind it and the, the, the part which is protruding directly into the kitchen yes, uh, they are. is not connected to another wall, so that needs to be reflected on the drafts. Um, it does not need to be reflected on the elevations. So when you do your elevation, you need to place your uh, elevation for the cabinets only attached to the wall. All right. Okay. That's it. That's okay. all I need. It's basically when you will be standing in that L shape yourself. You understand like what I mean? Yeah, but then yeah, I get um, I get five out of five elevations. Yes. Well, you will have yeah, you will have drafts, but it it's going to be just related to that particular protruding part of the kitchen bench. But it's amazing. It's got glass and windows, and it's open and anyway it's just me yeah whatever whatever goes on to the elevation it's um it must be attached to the wall or must be close right. to the wall that's all right that's fine i got that because the video i watched is said elevation one of three two of two and then the three of two so um so you're only doing three elevations all together and that protruding part should be reflected on the drafts because you won't see it. It actually will be, um, you need to cut it off for your elevation number two. Okay. Does this make sense? All right. No. <laughs> <laughs> So for elevation number two, there is nothing should be blocking the cabinets which are attached to the wall. It's all right. What I'm saying is when you stand in a spot and you've got your little 
round circle showing you one of two, one of three, two of three, three of three. That's right. Turn around. I'm, I'm just looking at them. That's it. That's my elevation. So your point of elevation is where the little circle is and where your elevation points to. That's right. That's where you're looking at. I'm just going to have a look what other students do. Okay. okay, that's not a good one. So I'm actually trying to base my design. So if it's the criteria with a one of three. Yes. So and that's that's not good enough. That we talked about that. The island bench is not recorded in the elevations. Um, just but this is not an island bench. This is an island bench. Okay. Yeah, I understand what you mean. I understand. So it's basically blocking the view of the wall. Yes. That's that's yes. the problem. Yes, I understand yes. that. I'm just going to find the floor plans quickly so we can all look at it all together. Okay, okay here it is. So I'm just going to share it quickly. Share. I hope we'll have enough time. Okay, so when you see the elevation here, so basically this is all we're interested. Can you see it now? Yes. So all we're interested in is everything that attached to that wall, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, attached to that wall. And number mm -hmm. three, attached to that wall, that, that part, obviously, the small part. Okay. Now, if we look at the floor plan. Okay, can you see the floor plan, guys? Yep. Yeah, With the floor because we've got lounge, we've got dining, so that's going to that's gonna be our kitchen and meals. That's right. So mm -hmm. what you're trying to do, what, as far as I understand from your description, so you're trying to place, if you can see my course or something like that in here. Yeah, and you only need 900 millimeter space so to that, walk that's through the benches. So that's your L shape. And now you're in a quandary because you're thinking, well, do I need to show that part here, that part of L shape? No, that part, this part here, which is the, the one looking at the um, doors, way. the main ones outside, and I'm sitting inside the kitchen. So exactly. So you need to position yourself in here and you need to look that yep. So you so, basically take that position and you look this way and you look that way. When you look that yep. way, so you, that uh, protruding part will be seen. Yes. When you look that way, you won't see that part here. Also, I've got a D as well, not just A, B, C, D. I've got a little bit coming out from the back wall that it kind of connects it to the lounge, but it's only half height and there's glass cabinets and ornaments so it's open living okay we will need to see but mostly just basically if you draw it on the floor plan and if you look into that direction onto this wall and just stand in imagine that you stand in there that's all you need to show okay and if you okay. have a Kitchen Island, uh, which is separately designed. I'm just going to show you. It's an island bench. It's called. It's an L shape. It's okay. connected. It's all connected. It's all into a um, triangle, which is the design basics. Uh, your fridge, your oven, and your sink. Yeah. Um, and so, so I'm just. Yeah, if I use confused, how do I document for this for you? So have a look at this, um, for example, that plan which the students submitted before. So that part twenty one, can you see that? Yes, I can. So number twenty one should be reflected on the draft, separate drafts only, and it does not belong to the elevation. Okay. 
Okay, so on your elevation, you will see uh, number 17, all that bench, whatever, uh, or maybe 14, I don't know. Well, whatever belongs to that wall and whatever... My kitchen, my kitchen goes around the other way. You see where the, uh, where the hot plate is? Yeah. The little bench, the, the island, the L bench comes across. So I've got a little breakfast bench in front of the dining Oh, so it um, across like this. Yes, yes. So, no, it's not not applicable in this situation, not what I've designed anyway. Okay. Well, then, I've got a little meals in front of the kitchen. All right. So in that case, you need to position yourself and create more elevation. So you need to position yourself in here and in there. That's right. So that's what I'm saying. I'm going to have like eight elevations for you. Y yes, in that case you will have to because you're kind of splitting it into two parts. So you kind of yes. you kind of place it split because it will be confusing. I'll split that room into two because it's it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's being um, what's it called um, rented or it's it's something that's not used twenty four seven. It's not a family of five or any of that stuff so you uh, maybe I'm wrong here but that kitchen is massive yeah okay well um, the yeah if you look at the floor plan it's um, it's a big kitchen but that's yeah. what they put in now no because if you look at that brief it's saying that it's somebody that's going to be in there for a short while or it's renting or debriefing and you know that kitchen is to last for a long time so it's basically maybe I'm reading the brief wrong but no it's not working like that for me you need a, a small little kitchen with um, appliances that are long lasting probably scissor stone bench tops and nothing like two pack on the wardrobes or anything like that, just do timber and then just stain them every time a client, you know, or tenant rolls out. So maybe I just did my presentation for my kitchen without giving you the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so on your background, so um, kitchen for the display. Kitchen home. meals, and then we're gonna go to the lounge and dining. Okay, uh, plan for the kitchen selection. Okay, so what are you trying to do? You're trying to incorporate the dining into the kitchen. No, because there's always the meals. Where's the meals? Mm. Who has the meals in here? You know what a dining is? Dining is a, uh, nobody calls anything that you eat in dining. It's uh, today, in today's world, and you asked us to look at, today's society and what it's like. Dining is like um, like lounge. It's two special places you never go into. You just dust, okay? So you got dining and lounge, but then you got the family, kitchen and meals. So you've, you gave me uh, a 20 square house. You want me to work into 21st century Mm. So you're trying to uh, make a multifunctional kitchen, is it correct? That's right, robust. It's called robust. Yeah, I like it. I think it's a good idea. If you look at this uh, window here, so it's obviously suggests that this is no. uh, yeah, indoor. The window is down the bottom, so it's already suggesting to you that the that the left hand side of this plane you're showing me is open okay so the lighting yes so move down and into the kitchen space and you've got your lounge you've got your dining they're all open to the alfresco which nobody's allowed to use because i don't know one of them multi builders owns the name i'm not sure who won the court case mexican or port of davis but either way that alfresco area is useless. So all you've got is this shitty little space that eventually is just going to be used by people that are there 
or in and out. So yes, I am doing a kitchen and meals in this four by four by, it's amazingly generous to be honest, um, mm -hmm. and lounge and dining are uninterrupted. Excellent. Well, see what we have to work with when they design the house, the, the, the typical, you know, uh, terrace sausage long house. And, and that's what we need to do. We need to accommodate all the needs. And it's real good that you're actually looking into that. And you also need to apply to the suburb uh, you're currently living in. So I'm in Sunbury, which is the last suburb in Melbourne, which, <laughs> you know, I'm the last metro train. Uh, but it doesn't mean that I don't know all the other metros in between. So listen to me. Um, I'm just going to... I'm trying, maybe I'm approaching this completely different to anybody else or anybody that has submitted this project with, but then again, you probably knew from day one when I logged in that I wasn't going to be anybody else. But I'm telling you right now. All the students kids, are very special to me. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and yes, I'm just one of those extremely... Let's hope she doesn't log in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that. And obviously, uh, yeah, the best works actually goes, go on the wall and, you know, and there's go on the Facebook and et cetera. So I'm looking forward to see the different approach. It would be great. Well, you know what? I, I know what sells and I know what developers look for and I know what people look for. And I, that's one thing you're not going to surprise me on. So I'm telling you, you're getting about eight elevations on my kitchen right now because I'm telling you right now, I'm splitting that kitchen area into meals and kitchen and lounge and dining are uninterrupted as well as visually and um, structurally. So it's all open because that's what 21, 21st century is about because especially when you got a shitty little one-bedroom house like this, which is already you're walking when you enter this house, you're 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 walking past the garage, you're 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 walking through corridors, you want some open space, you want some open living, some explanation. How does this house fit in today? So you know what? This house does not, to be honest. Uh, well, yeah. the, the plan, we cannot judge the plans because the plans are provided and we're working with what it is and obviously, <laughs> you know. Oh, I hate it. It's disgusting. And, and can you imagine walking 30 metres? I know. I know. It's a, it's a terrace house and obviously that's what it is. And luckily they place the bathroom next to the kitchen that at least one would last in here. <laughs> So, and uh, one yeah. good thing, all the plumbing's connected. Actually, it isn't because the ensuite's on the other side. So, you're still going to go under the slab or through the walls. Either way, it's it's a horrible design house. Yeah, there, there are some faults in it, but there are lots there's of houses. Look, there's a shower in the bloody garage. Seriously. Uh, no, it's not a shower, it's a laundry. Is that what it is? Yes. It looks like a shower and a sink, I'm sorry. And there's no doors no. or walls or anything. It's a sink and the, I would imagine. Shower. Washing. I'm sorry, it's a shower. No. Internationally, that is a shower. Well, this is the shower. That's how oh. it goes, yeah. <laughs> because you have to have the drain if you if you want to show that it, it's a plumbing in there and it's a shower or a sink or a bath you need to have the circle in there and that's the drain and that's how they're showing it unfortunately that's that the shower you can see here. Up. but but this is this is what that's a that's this a laundry is, i would i would never get a bloody building permit with these <laughs> well, <laughs> So, okay. Sorry. So any more Sorry. Questions? Um, no questions from me, but thank you very much for the evening. <laughs> Bye, guys.
Have a lovely day. Have a lovely weekend. Any questions, please email to me. If you want me to look up at your submissions prior submitting it to the uh, site, I'm happy to do that. And also work on your uh, e-portfolio as well. So uh, thank you for letting me to record it. I'm going to place it on the YouTube channel so the students can see it and discuss it. And this now you might have more comments on the Facebook. Oh, shit. <laughs> We're not allowed to swear. Okay. Sorry. Have a lovely day, everybody. Thank you for coming. See you later. Bye. Bye.